Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It is 8.58. It is 64 degrees. It is the day after Super Tuesday. And have it is recovered? the moment after the storms. Yeah. Have you recovered from Super Tuesday? Big I, I think I have recovered. Have you? I think so. I hope so. God, yeah, that was quite that. Now we got to start gearing up for November. Ooh, that'll be fun. This is going to be a fun summer. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be You're kind of a politics. wild one, yeah, isn't it? So. Ooh, when it comes to politics. And something you might be able to do, sir, well, before you start, before you describe this one, mm -hmm. when you read the headline of what it was, what did you think? I knew. Oh, well, see, that's not fair. I didn't have no, I, I had no idea. Heard, you've never heard of pickle before? Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard of pickle, but the way they read is a venue chicken and pickle. I thought, wow, I get a chicken sandwich and a pickle. You're thinking of Chick-fil-A. I'm thinking something like that. Because they have pickles on their chicken sandwiches. Exactly. But, but no, 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 no. This is a brand new entertainment venue that's coming to San Antonio called Chicken and Pickle. What is pickle? Pickle is, all right. It's a hybrid, of, it's, it's a hybrid of tennis, badminton, and table tennis or ping pong played with paddles. It's considered to be a good sport for all ages. So this place is going to be over there near UTSA, where everything else is. So it's the top golf like pickle. The, yeah, it's the entertainment spot in San Antonio, apparently. There's going to be a full-service restaurant, mm -hmm. a rooftop bar, lawn games, and six indoor and five outdoor pickleball courts. It's supposed to open by mid-April at 5215 UTSA Boulevard. It's a mostly popular game played as doubles on a court half the size of a tennis court and an oversized ping pong paddle and ball similar to a wiffle ball. All right, so that's the pickle part. The chicken part, yeah. all the chicken is locally sourced. Like that. Never ever chickens which feature no, wait, it's locally sourced, never ever chickens, which feature no antibiotics or hormones and a variety of delicious dishes. Like according that. According to the news release. This is their third location, expecting to hire about 150 people. That's not a bad deal. That's a cool thing there. Once so, again, this is um, chicken and pickle. Interviews, by the way, if you're interested in getting a job, started to take place March 22nd at 23rd. Go to Chicken and Pickle's website to find out more. So pickle is a game, not something you eat. But you can have pickles with your chicken. But you can have pickles with your chicken. Let's take a look at your rundown. Joe Biden scores big on Super Tuesday. So I'm here to report, we are very much alive! The former vice president is projected to win at least eight Super Tuesday states. In California, a new wildfire has been threatening homes near Los Angeles. This fire has burned at least 175 acres in the city of Norco. People had to evacuate when flames threatened about 500 homes. A deep cleaning underway on airplanes as health officials race to contact passengers who flew with one of the country's newest coronavirus patients. North Carolina announcing the state's first case, a man who traveled from Washington state to the Raleigh-Durham Airport. President Donald Trump is donating his quarterly salary to efforts to stop the growing coronavirus outbreak. The White House press secretary tweeted a picture of his check along with the announcement. President Trump has made history. He's believed to be the first U.S. leader to speak directly with a member of the Taliban. He says they had a very good talk and he says the Taliban wants to end the violence in Afghanistan. Two men were roommates. They're in their 50s. They had an argument that led to one of them slashing the other across the hand. The suspect got away in a vehicle at last check, police were still looking for him. The Supreme Court set to hear arguments today in a Louisiana abortion case. The center's around a law firm that requires doctors performing abortions to obtain admitting privileges from a nearby hospital. Daredevil Nick Walenda, who was hours away from his most dangerous stunt ever. He'll try to walk 1,800 feet across a crater of an active volcano in Nicaragua. Affordable Bentley <laughs> is only making 12 of these vehicles. The Moliner Bacalar it doesn't have a roof, but it does have some very fancy wood on the dash. In fact, the wood is 5,000 years old. A former NASA engineer spent six months building this trampoline using steel and Kevlar to test its strength. Then he dropped a car on it to check it out. Because that's what the people want. They, they basically wasted a perfectly good car. Yeah, pretty much so. That's what it looks dropped like. Dropped it off a trampoline and then it fell off the trampoline onto the ground and crashed. But I bet that was fun. Glad it wasn't that $2 million Bentley. Wow. You see you that? Imagine that. You see that? And no roof. You don't even get a top with that. You don't even, I know. You, gotta pay you still got to buy another top. I guess so. That's not even right. You needed a top today. Uh, yes, you did. But it looks like the storms have moved on out. Yeah, they're out of here. Look, the sun's starting to pop out. It's kind of a, kind of a cool scene there as we look towards downtown. Uh, the line of storms that moved through San Antonio earlier are now well to our east. We still got some cloud cover, though. Winds are going to pick up. That's going to be a big story today. Let's take a look at the radar, and I'll show you where this action is right now. Uh, mainly off to the east of San Antonio. You know, a thin line stretching all the way from 
basically the Dallas area all the way down to Corpus. And that is moving east pretty quickly. But uh, our friends out in Howitzville, you're about to get this line. Some uh, quick showers, quick storms moving through here with this. And it'll be out of here pretty quickly. Uh, we also have some showers behind all of this. Kerrville up to Fredericksburg, seeing a few showers. These are all working north. And I still think we could see some showers here in San Antonio today. 64 degrees at the airport, 60 at Boulevardy, 55 comfort. Winds are starting to pick up. And yes, it will be windy. Uh, we're expecting winds out of the northwest 10 to 20 gusting to 30 high temperature today right around 73. We're going to talk more about rainfall totals. How much rain do we get? Well, more on that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, here's a look at trans guide I 10 at Frio. Remember this morning we have wreck after wreck after wreck. It looks like the roads are finally starting to dry up a little bit and traffic's moving much better. But pay attention when you're out there and use your blinker. Yeah, that's one of uh, David's pet news. The final voting numbers in Bear County delayed by several hours last night. The hold up due to a glitch in the software system. Our Sarah Costa tells us exactly what went wrong. Good morning, and the elections office is still trying to figure out exactly what happened, leading those poll numbers to come out so late just before three o'clock this morning, especially when those polls close at 7 p.m. It is not normal for those numbers to come out that late. But last night, the Bear County Elections Office says they had some software issues throughout the evening, which held up the posting of the cumulative voting numbers, which include election day voting numbers, early voting numbers, and absentee voting. The Bear County Elections Office says there are 280 vote centers located throughout the county, and because voters could cast their ballot at any center, it changed the dynamic of the voting process and reporting of results as well. The software company for the new system had representatives at the Elections Office all night trying to remedy the issues, but there was not an exact answer from them for what went wrong. Kellanen went on to say that she is very pleased with the voter turnout, calling it extraordinary. The final numbers were 122,159 early voters with a total of 253,071 votes cast. Now the elections office says they are looking into what went wrong with the software so they can fix it before the upcoming May elections. From the newsroom, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. They, so after they eventually got all those votes counted, here's a look at some of the results in the Texas Democratic presidential race. Big surprise. Remember, it looked like Bernie Sanders was going to run away with this with all the polls up to Election Day. Not the case on Election Day. Biden won it with 34 percent to 30 percent. That's the entire state. And if you look at Bear County, you can see that actually Bernie Sanders was ahead. Yep, 33 to 29. And taking a look at the Republican side of the race, not much of a competition on that one. In the state of Texas, the current president, 94%. And in Bear County, well, it's a pretty similar story, 93%. Another one of those races a lot of people very interested in, the sheriff's race on the Democratic side and on the Republican side. To start with the Democrats, you can see Javier Salazar had 54% of the vote, so he will be ready to go in November. No runoff there. On the Republican side... No runoff either. No runoff. Gerard either. Rickoff. And for several candidates, the race is not over because there are multiple races that are headed to the runoffs. Well, that election is scheduled for May 26th. So here's a look at some of the races heading into the runoffs. First up, two Democrats looking to unseat Senator John Cornyn. There were 12 candidates in this race. Mary M.J. Heger got the most votes. And right now, we still don't know who will be in the runoff with her. It's a tight race between Royce West and Christina Ramirez. Bear County Precinct 2 Constable Leticia Vasquez will face um, Eno Medea in a runoff. Bear County Commissioner Precinct 3 race also heading into a runoff on the Republican side. Tom Rickoff and Trish DeBerry. For U.S. Representative District 23, Congressman Will Hurd decided not to seek re-election. The Republican candidates wanted to take his spot are heading into a runoff. Tony Gonzalez and Raul Reyes. And finally, Democratic State Senator race for District 19. Zichel Pena Rodriguez, Rodriguez rather, will face off against Roland Gutierrez in the runoff. Again, that runoff election is going to take place May 26. All right, these are just some of the results from the primary election. You can find a full list of results on KSAT.com. You can also take a look at how Texans voted for a president based on the race, sex, and education. That and a lot more on our website. Got a lot of it broken down for you. Just click over on the Vote 2020 tab on the top 
of the page. All right, let's move on to your morning headlines. A lot going on around the country outside of Super Tuesday results. We have new information in the aftermath of that deadly weather that ripped through Tennessee. And we have video of an amazing rescue in New Jersey, but we start with the latest on the coronavirus here in the States. Max Massey now joins us here in the studio with that. Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. A lot going on, obviously. The election yesterday, mm -hmm. everything going on around the country. But yeah, we want to start with the latest on the coronavirus here. Now, Nancy Pelosi calling for a bipartisan meeting in D.C. A Democratic aide says that the speaker invited Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy to discuss plans as we move forward. Right now, no talk about closing public galleries or trimming tours in D.C. The leader is expected to focus on making sure that our country is prepared, making sure that D.C. is prepared, keeping Congress's doors open. That meeting set for 2 p.m. Now to the latest on the tornado that ripped through Tennessee, the deadliest tornado in seven years. And take a look at this video. This is what neighbors are still waking up to today. Now, a state of emergency has been declared in Tennessee. Rescuers still going door to door, searching for survivors until they clear all the structures in the hardest hit neighborhoods. East Nashville residents, they only had six minutes to prepare for that storm to hit. It felt like a big rush of air pulling us up. And everything uh, just started going away. Rain started pelting us, kids screaming. And yeah, your hearings from some of the hardest hit individuals over there. Now tens of thousands of people still without power. Communities coming together, though, starting to clean up, starting to move forward. Tennessee's governor calling the efforts a profound turnout. All right, guys, well, now let's head to New Jersey. The video really telling a better story than I can. An incredible story of a life-saving rescue. Let's take a look at this video. It all started when a tractor trailer ran off the right side of the road into the express lanes, hitting the guardrail on the bridge before catching fire. You can see this body cam video. The state trooper sprinting towards that vehicle already on fire. He and a lieutenant pulling the driver out of that vehicle to safety. And you can't really hear it very well, but literally seconds later after they pulled him, that vehicle exploding. So thanks to the heroic work by the state trooper and the lieutenant, that driver sustained only minor injuries. And lastly, heading to California, a crafty homeowner able to use her sprinkler system to stop a would be thief. So take a look at this in it. You see a person on a bike ride towards the property. When that person got too close, he was actually hit. Here it is again. Coming through bike, you see him wearing a hood, could be a thief and boom. Now the homeowner says that thieves have been stealing tools and other items from vehicles in her community. So she set up this motion activated sprinkler to protect her things. Clearly it was a move that worked really well. That's awesomeness. So I love it when the, the bad guy uses are scared of water. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was just the water. I think it's something sprayed around the eyeball. And he's like, <laughs> what is right happening? Wow. He's like, oh, they're watching me. I gotta go. I gotta go. That's great stuff. Keep Thank you.